This is a big moment in the history of this conflict, the 10-year war, the longest in America's history. At the White House today, the president held a meeting to talk about the beginning of the exit. How many of the 100,000 troops currently stationed here should be brought home? And all of this amid the continuing clamor from Congress to accelerate the withdrawals and do something about the $10 billion a month being spent on this war. But as you're about to hear, the two men at the top, Secretary of Defense Robert Gates and the general in charge, David Petraeus, are making the case to be careful, keep the military pressure on. So who is right? And what is the answer to the questions Americans are asking? Are we winning this war? That is where we start. Are we winning this war? We have had a great deal of success in achieving the mission that uh, our forces have been given. Is that the functional equivalent of winning? We're making progress. They'll try to come back, though, and that's why we say that these gains, while significant, are fragile. Fragile in part because Petraeus and Gates say if the military pressure is strong enough, there is a possibility of peace negotiations by this winter. If we don't let off the pressure now, there is a real possibility of a negotiated settlement by the end of this year. It's hard to handicap that, Diane. If we can't talk about winning, if we don't talk about military victory, is it too much to ask of American men and women to put their lives on the line for the hope of a negotiated settlement with the people they're fighting? Diane, we have not had a declared victory in a war, with the possible exception of the first Gulf War since World War II. It is the phenomenon of modern conflict. Are the American people safer at the end because of the sacrifice these soldiers have made? That's the real question. Not yet the kind of critical mass that sets off a chain reaction that we saw in Iraq. But that's an important development. And there's no question the surge of American troops has achieved something formidable. Look at the map. They actually reclaim the critical South, including Kandahar, the spiritual home of the Taliban. But the fighting continues on the border, which raises the question, how many troops can the U.S. afford to start bringing home? The president has said a significant number should come home by July 11th. While just this weekend, the defense secretary countered with the word modest. Does President Obama understand the impact of taking too many out? Well, that's a discussion. I mean, that's a judgment call that has to be made in the context of a wide variety of issues that the president has to face. You said, Mr. Secretary, modest drawdown. The president has said substantial drawdown. Modest, significant, well, substantial? The question depends on what time frame you're using. I mean, whatever, <clears throat> compared to 100,000 troops or 150,000 coalition troops, uh, any number uh, that's not completely off the charts uh, in July is, is going to seem like a modest number. What I have said is that it is important, as we did in Iraq, to have a strategy behind the numbers, not to just pluck a single number out and say, okay, that's the number. As, as I've been talking about with the budget, that's math, not strategy. But General Trace, are you saying, give us more time, don't take, what's the number, five, 10, don't take more than that, give us more time this year? Well, again, look, the decision ultimately is the president's. Our job is to provide options and then to assess levels of risk. It is ultimately the president's decision, and of course the Congress needs to, uh, we need to have congressional support. But they also need to understand consequences. Congress keeps saying, in essence, hey, we've had it, $10 billion a month is unsustainable. The cost is already coming down. We will be spending $40 billion a year less on these wars in 2012 than we did on, in 2011. I think you also have to ask the question, what's the cost of failure? We've invested a huge amount of money here. We've invested 1,254 lives up to this point. So what's the cost of getting it wrong? Congress, Congress is almost always impatient. I remember in the spring of 2007, people saying, this war is lost. You said they have short-term thinking. Yeah, absolutely. I can say that since I'm leaving in a few weeks. <laughs> and leaving this partnership. 
Petraeus and Gates, literal war buddies for so many years. Gates is going to retire, Petraeus go to the CIA, where the problems will remain. For instance, what about the Afghan National Army? 86% of that army still cannot read. There's no question uh, about the progress of the Afghan National Army. When we hear the mixed reports out in the field, still mixed reports. I think you probably hear the most mixed reports on the police, frankly. And then there's Pakistan with that wild flurry of brand new drone attacks, possibly targets retrieved from Osama bin Laden's hard drive. Was one of them Ilyas Kashmiri, a top al-Qaeda leader? First of all, I'm not sure that's been confirmed. Uh, and so it would be premature actually to begin assessing that until we actually know that Ilyas Kashmiri, who is indeed, has indeed been a very important operational coordinator for al-Qaeda, uh, whether he is in, in fact dead or not. And Pakistan, what will be the sign to you it's really different? I think things change slowly in Pakistan, and we have to work our way through that. And what about the death of bin Laden, which Gates said could be a game changer? What did you say the moment it was confirmed? You know, I actually didn't say anything. We got the word uh, and uh, just basically did this, and, and that was it. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of chess beaters in this particular business. Signs that it is a game changer? Not yet, and certainly not here in, uh, in Afghanistan. It's really just too soon to tell. Uh, you know, it's only been a month. And now these two men, lions in summer, fall, and winter, are heading home. General David Petraeus had something for his friend, renowned for breaking the back of the bureaucracy to get what the troops needed to protect them. It's a piece of an armored vehicle called an MRAP. It has a hole in it. He wanted Gates to know, despite the power of the explosive, that vehicle Gates had ordered had saved all the lives inside. Even though there's a hole in this, the four individuals, the four troopers in this MRAP, survived. Pretty awesome, huh? It's awesome.